scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants Ephesians you to attain. Ephesians chapter 1, please, Thank and you. verse 3. The grace of God is a powerful mystery. This is my definition of the grace of God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. This is my definition of grace. Grace is more than just unmerited access. Grace is the generic name given to every spiritual blessing that is given to the believer routed through the office of the Christ. It's called grace. So anointing is grace wisdom is grace faith is grace all spiritual blessings that have been given to the saints but can only be accessed through the office of the Christ is called grace when you limit your understanding of grace to just um, unmerited access or being pardoned from iniquity by reason of being in Christ it is very very limiting so when we have access to grace, it's more than just favor. Uh -uh. That's why the Bible says grace and peace be multiplied unto you. And then the Bible says that, um, how, how does he put it? It says God is able to make all grace. I think I shared that the last time I was here. The grace of God. Unfortunately, and, and lovingly speaking, for most believers, our our understanding of grace just has to do with the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ and receiving it and then, and then that's all. But grace is more than that. Grace represents every spiritual blessing allocated for the victory of the saints, but it is only routed in Christ. An unbeliever cannot have grace, can have mercy, but not grace. Are we blessed? The grace of God only comes through the office. The administrator of the grace of God is Christ himself. Is God helping us now? So if you tell me you have encountered Jesus, I search for this. Notice my choice of words. Access to righteousness. Access to the life of God access to the grace of God what does access mean potential it does not mean experience access means that the door has been opened but it is up to you to come into the experience of it for instance we have received the way the life of God but Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness that is in their heart so it is true that he that had the son had life but because it is access it takes a level of spiritual illumination to come into the experience of it this is where faith is applicable so it is by grace but then through faith to become our experience are we blessed many believers continue to chant spiritual realities that the grace of God has provided and sometimes we never get to walk into the experience of it because grace gives you access 
and access is important but that's not what you really need what you need is an experience is God blessing us let's hurry up for the sake of time number two I pray and trust that this is blessing your heart number two the second encounter that you will need to be mighty with God in this earth and in this season is an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit please write it down in this order an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 then he answered and spake unto me saying this is the word of the Lord unto Joshua Selman saying this destiny and this kingdom advance is not by might is not by power but it is by my spirit saith the Lord by my spirit your destiny your excelling ministry business family advancement the manifestation of the hand of god within a territory please hear me the bible says it is not by might it is not by power but it is by the spirit of god whilst it is true that the holy spirit plays an active role in the revelation of jesus the holy spirit as one of the the godhead has a separate office that an individual can encounter please listen the holy spirit is there to create conviction jesus was teaching and he said i have many things to tell you but he cannot bear them now he said how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he shall guide you into all truth is that true he will testify of me he said but the holy spirit listen to me as god has a separate office that you will need to encounter the person and the office of the Holy Ghost Isaiah 48 and verse 6 Isaiah chapter 48 Did I get that right? Give me Isaiah 30 and verse 21. Isaiah 30 and verse 21. It says, Thine ears shall hear a word from behind you saying, This is the way. If someone who speaks to you, walk ye in it and you will find rest. Walk ye in it when you turn to the right and when you turn to the left. You will hear a voice saying a voice the same word is used in genesis chapter 3 and they heard the lord walking the voice of the lord walking in the cool of the day that voice is a person and even though jesus came and walked upon the earth jesus is the word the holy spirit represents the voice of god to the saints please understand this jesus christ is the word but the Holy Ghost represents the voice of God. This is what I'm trying to establish. It's very, very important you understand this. If you do not encounter the office and the person of the Holy Spirit, your hearing in this kingdom will have a problem. And your rest is predicated on your hearing. the person and the ministry of the holy spirit when i started out with god i used to watch a lot of Catherine kuman's videos and benny Hinn, and i would hear them cry and talk about the holy spirit and i felt it, it felt so strange how could you talk about someone you don't see how could you talk about someone who looks unseen but the reality the substance of what they were saying it was so real they would cry they would sob i knew they were not lying I knew there was a dimension of reality that they were operating on. Catherine Kuhlman would cry on stage and say, he's my best friend. Don't offend my best friend. 
Pastor Benny will continue to shout and say, ah, oh, he's the Holy Spirit until I began my journey with God and when I was introduced to the person and the office of the Holy Spirit, my life changed. I knew hmm, that he could take a weak person, my brothers and my sisters. When the Holy Spirit holds you, he can turn you into a sign and a wonder. Many have encountered the Son of the living God they have the life of God, but they are unable to be effective in this Christian experience because you need an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit to believers? Number one, the Holy Ghost is the revealer of the word of God. Please write it down. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of the word of God. First Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 to 12. Sorry, I'm hurrying up because we're working with time. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 to 12. But as it is written, the Bible declares, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Uh -huh. But God had revealed them. How? By the Spirit. That means if you do not have access to this spirit you also do not have access to genuine revelation the holy ghost is the revealer of the word please keep that scripture there it says for the spirit is given the exclusive ability to search all things even the deep things of god verse 11 for no man for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of that man which is in him even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God hallelujah it says now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God to the end that we might know revelation the things that are freely given to us from God when you see men acting as though they outsource a dimension of knowledge from another realm you are right but the bringer of that revelation is the spirit of God that the Holy Spirit is able to fetch truths from the bowels of heaven and bring it to ordinary men and turn their lives to signs and wonders the Holy Ghost is the revealer of the word John chapter 16 when you read from verse 13 the Bible tells us John 16 and verse 13 please give it to us that how be it when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you you see how complicated truth is it's not enough to have access to truth you must be guided because truth without guidance can still kill you it's not only a lie that kills truth unguided can also destroy Did you ever learn that the truth too can kill? He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself. Are you seeing it now? Here, this scripture is the reason why the Holy Spirit conceals his presence. The Holy Spirit, I believe, according to the authority of scripture, has a real form but the reason why he conceals his form is because his assignment is to glorify Jesus <laughs> are we together that he will not speak of himself and he will but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come the Holy Spirit is not a dove the Holy Spirit is not anointing oil in fact, oil does not anoint. Oil only anoints because someone anointed, anointed it. I'm not against that. Don't, don't get me wrong. The Holy Spirit is not water. The Holy Spirit is not wind. The Holy Spirit is not smoke. These are just expressions of his person. The Holy Spirit is God. God in every way. God in every form there is an office of the Holy Ghost and hear me dear people of God this is a call to come into that level of encounter with the person and the office of the Holy Spirit the revealer of the word number two very quickly 
what is the assignment what does the encounter with the person and the whole the ministry of the holy spirit bring he is the confirmer of the word the holy spirit does not only reveal the word he confirms the word isaiah 44 from verse 24 please to 26 we're doing a little bible study here isaiah 44 from verse 24 to 26 thus saith the lord thy redeemer and he that formed thee from the womb i am the lord that maketh all things that stretch forth the heavens alone and spread it abroad the earth by myself 25 that frustrated the tokens of the liars and maketh diviners mad that turned wise men backward and make it their knowledge foolish 26 let's read together that confirmed the word of his servants and performed the counsel of his messengers hear me the holy spirit is the dimension of the trinity that is responsible for manifestation you cannot desire manifestation and neglect his office every provision that the word of god makes available the holy spirit is the one who makes it manifest very powerful so when you say be healed in the name of jesus you have spoken that word by the authority of the lord jesus christ the holy spirit is that active dimension of the trinity whose power goes into that sick body and begins to make biological spiritual adjustments until that person looks like what the word of god should be he will not stop for many years in the body of christ there has been a controversy between the limit of the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit so we have people who say word and we have people who say spirit both of them are incomplete i pray that god will answer that question in this short session in the name of jesus christ the ministry of the spirit as the confirmer of the word mark 16 and verse 20 mark chapter 16 and verse 20 the bible says and they went forth and preached everywhere the lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following the lord walking with them when they preached and they said this is what we've brought to you from heaven the holy ghost was there with them he is with you and shall be in you walking to will and to do men of god hear me we need the holy spirit to walk close to us if we need real results it is the holy spirit that has the ability to produce supernatural results no man sustains the ability to produce results at god's dimension except assisted by the holy ghost we're tired of the status quo there's gonna be more than this we're tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this there's gotta be more gotta be more there's gotta be more than this there's gotta be more there's gotta be more the holy ghost is also the custodian of the anointing please write it down the Holy Ghost is the custodian of the anointing. Mm. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord, he said, the messianic prophecy. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, that Spirit, hath anointed me too. Then he begins to list everything that the anointing does. To preach, it takes the anointing to preach glad tidings. It takes more than understanding the message of salvation to preach it takes the anointing it takes the anointing to bind up broken hearts it takes the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives it takes the anointing to open the prison to them that are bound it takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and even the vengeance of our God it takes the anointing to comfort people who mourn it takes more than a sympathetic heart the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. 
I have power, he says, by the Spirit. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. But truly, I am full of power, not by my ability, by the Spirit of the Lord. It is the Holy Spirit who empowers men in this kingdom. We are all ordinary except for what he does in us. He reconfigures us by his power. And suddenly we cease to be normal. We cease to be ordinary. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Jesus himself. But you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. And unto the utmost part of the earth. You shall receive power. The Holy Ghost is the custodian of the anointing. Just because you are born again may not necessarily expose you to the anointing. It gives you access to that possibility. But you need an encounter with the person and the office of the Spirit. I do not know one man on earth who works notably in dimensions of the anointing and the ministry of the Holy Spirit is strange to that individual. I am yet to find one. There is no man that works truly in the miraculous, that works truly in signs and wonders of all forms, not just in the fivefold ministry. You must be exposed to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number three, and we'll stop here for the sake of time. The third encounter that you need if you must do exploits in this kingdom and manifest the reality of the kingdom is an encounter with the word of God. Hmm. An encounter with the word of God. Now please look up. An encounter with Jesus as the savior is different from an encounter with the word of God, the logos of God, a compendium of the mysteries, the secrets, the methodologies, and the principles of the kingdom. You must have an encounter with the word of God, the living logos of God. You can have an encounter with the son of God and you have Zoe, but spiritual ignorance will make you live a very fruitless Christian experience as though you were not saved. This is where the intelligence of the saints lie. Their encounter with the word of God. Please write this down. The word of God is a compendium of the mysteries, the secrets, the principles, and the methodologies of the kingdom. It's called the word of God. A compendium of the mysteries of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 it says because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven John 1 the principles the patterns the methodologies of God Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 let the word of Christ he says dwell in you richly in all wisdom i wish i had time to walk this word we can spend the whole night discussing this scripture look up please it says let the word of christ dwell in you but it says let it dwell in you in all wisdom that means is the word of god dwells in you randomly it will confuse you and lead you into error the word of god must dwell in you in a way that it dwells in all wisdom if all you have is just scriptures, you will misquote scriptures, you will get into trouble because you, the word of God is dwelling in you, but not in all wisdom. So it says, hey, while you study the Bible, while you cram the scriptures, make sure there is a sequential arrangement of truth so that the devil will not come and manipulate what you already have and destroy you with it. When Satan came to Jesus, it was, it is written, that Jesus already had within him. But because the word of God, he was the embodiment of the word. Dwelling in all wisdom. Are we blessed? Three things happen to you when you have an encounter with the word of God. Number one. Understanding. The first miracle that happens in your life when you truly have an encounter with the logos of God. 
is understanding Luke chapter 9 from the pages of my heart let my worship begin that never ends to the God of all flesh you're my God and your name is Yahweh your name is Yahweh Yahweh he is my King and his name is Yahweh your name is Yahweh Yahweh Luke chapter 19 and verse 42 please understanding the first miracle we receive Luke chapter 19 and verse 42 19 and verse 42 Jesus began to weep over Jerusalem and he said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if thou hast known, even thou, at least in this your day, the things that belong to your peace, he says, but now they are hidden from you so that you cannot come into this experience. You are barren of understanding and so you do not have the peace that should come as a result of understanding. This is powerful. Understanding. We all need that miracle in our lives. Luke chapter 24 and verse 45. Luke 24 and verse 45. Read it please if you're a Christian. One, two, read. Then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture. Understanding is beyond education. Understanding is, is beyond the realm of intellectual prowess. It takes the ministry of the Spirit to open your understanding to the Word of God. Then open he their understanding that they might understand Scripture. This is the first miracle that happens to you. The second is faith. When you have an encounter with the logos of God, you receive faith. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Romans 10 and verse 17. So then faith cometh. So faith is living. It can come to you. It comes when you hear the word of God. As I have an encounter with the word of God, I'm inviting faith to my life. Faith that commands victories. Faith that is responsible for exploits. The Bible says that the just shall live by his faith. And that faith comes only when I encounter the word of God. Romans chapter 4. I wish we had time, but let's see how far we can go. Romans 4 from verse 19. The Bible talks about the patriarch Abraham. It says, and be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about an hundred years. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Uh -huh. He staggered not at the promise of God. So there was something for him to hold on. The word of God is an anchor. You can hold on to it. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. 21. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore... It was imputed unto him for righteousness. Stability is the next thing that you receive. Understanding, faith, and then stability. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, Paul is admonishing the church in Corinth, be ye steadfast, unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain he says be steadfast he says be unmovable that means when you vacillate in this kingdom is proof that your faith is not stable your faith is not alive and the word of god is not at work in you if god gives you a word you can hold on to that word and as life beats left right and center you say he told me that in the name of Jesus, my church will thrive in this city. He told me that in the name of Jesus, when men say there is a casting down for me, there is a lifting up. 
it is what God said that keeps you it is what God said that keeps you what did he tell you hold on to it Isaiah 33 and verse 6 tells us that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times when you find a very stable Christian he has been fortified by the wisdom and the knowledge of scripture in the name of Jesus I pray for you that you will cultivate such a hunger for an encounter with the Word of God can I be sincere with you thank God for all the platforms that are available for believers to at least have an encounter with the Word of God but you cannot give the word five minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes and expect a lifetime of result and stability no sir there is a lot to know about the word of God there are keys of the kingdom not a key the truths of the kingdom that make for the victory of the saints are finite but there are many it's a body of spiritual knowledge called marvelous light they are finite but they are not just two or three or four. You will need to know the principles that make for speed, restoration. You will need to know the principles that make for increase. You will need to know the principles that make for sustainability. You need to know the principles that are responsible for your warfare and your dominion. You will need to know the principles that are responsible for your health and your wellness. It takes time to learn those things. I found your word and I did eat it and it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul you must cultivate passion for the word just opening the Bible in the name of Jesus and you open it and just read something um, then he put their eyes on Zedekiah and the king of Babylon and close it you won't grow that way you will never ever grow that way it takes intention you need to give the word time let me respectfully encourage us servants of the living God it takes time there are treasures that are hidden here but it will take patience to see it do you know that look up please when Mary of Magdala when Jesus rose again different people came and they could not see him but the woman stayed there she was gazing at the resurrected word she stayed there until she suddenly saw a man and she said rabboni he said do not touch me it was her staying that made her to see the remaining disciples came in a hurry and they went back we've not seen him but the woman said i'm not going anywhere i will stay there are times you will stay on one verse for days you want to leave it and God says the next level of your ministry is in that scripture just keep looking just keep looking and suddenly he will isolate from all the, the scriptures and just bring out three words from that scripture that becomes the next level of your lifting please don't run when you have not seen run only when you have seen from scripture an encounter with the word of God this is 2021 what have you seen what have you seen for your health what have you seen for your lifting what have you seen for your destiny we're about to pray Parusali Kataria an encounter with the son of the living God giving me access to righteousness access to the life of God and access to the riches of the kingdom we call it grace then an encounter with the spirit of the living God access to direction access to spiritual illumination becoming for me the confirmer of the word the revealer of the word the custodian of the anointing of the spirit and then an encounter with the logos of God very powerful giving me understanding that brings faith that also brings stability this is how it starts it starts from understanding then faith is built and on the strength of faith I can find stability in my life are we together we leave the last encounter for another time but can we take a few minutes to pray please rise up on your feet I'd like you to pray these dimensions in your life 
Let it be from the depth of your heart. Father, here at Wafbeck 2021, I cry for an encounter by the Spirit of the living God. An encounter with the Son of the living God. An encounter with the Spirit of all grace. An encounter with the Logos of God. Someone is praying. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Your exploit this year in ministry, in your family, in your career, the manifestation of the kingdom, the advancement of the kingdom is predicated on these encounters. Lift your voice for a minute or two and call upon the God of heaven. I declare by the spirit of the living God you are praying now you are praying now an encounter with the son of the living God an encounter with the son of the living God I have the life of God in the name of Jesus the life that is superior to the limitations of mere men I declare by the spirit of God it's not a theoretical reality I am a possessor of the life of God here and now I encounter the spirit of all grace in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice. You are praying. The spirit of all grace. The revealer. The revealer of the word of God. The strengthener. My advocate. I expose myself to the fullness of his ministry. Even in this season. Now you pray and cry for an encounter with the word of god the logos of god bringing me spiritual illumination access to light the light that produces victory the entrance of my word the bible declares give it light and understanding to the simple the word of god producing faith the faith that moves mountains the faith that can change the impossible bringing stability to my christian experience so that i am fruitful in every good work finally i'd like you to pray father the grace to stay with your word until an encounter is established in my life the staying power the grace to stay with the word. The grace to stay with the word. The patience to stay. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you